Welcome to the D.A.R.E. podcast, where it is all about helping people overcome anxiety and panic attacks. The D.A.R.E. app has over 1 million downloads and is free to download at DareResponse.com. Now, without further ado, here is the D.A.R.E. podcast. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I was in the wrong room. I clicked the wrong link. Oh, you got here first this time. (laughs) Good to see you. How are you? Hi, great. How are you? Good, back in my office. <laughs> not oh, yeah, no, no, not no hut anymore. Kevin, where you are yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. If you don't know who we are, my name is Michelle Kavanaugh. Um, I need a echo. We are here to answer everybody's questions. My printer stopped working. So if you see me looking on my phone, I'm not playing Candy Crush. I'm just getting the questions on my phone. Here, here. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Your printer stopped working today, too? I don't have any more paper. <laughs> oh, I'm out of ink. See, we should just be doing this together from the same office. I have plenty of paper. I have no ink. I'd love to see North Carolina. Come on over. Hey, everyone. I'm I'm out of New York and I'm in North Carolina now. Same background, though. You would never know the difference. <laughs> Good. So we have a couple of questions today. Let's just start with the first um, number. One is a question from Amanda. Right, Michelle, we have the same sheet? Yep. Okay, when I don't feel anxious, I'll randomly get an energy ball in my tummy and have a racing heart. I'll feel big emotions as well. It can last up to 30 minutes or so. I feel like since I've developed this panic disorder, my body is confused and just shoves up warnings where there isn't anything to worry about. How do I handle this? (laughs) You guys, please pop in the chat who experiences random adrenaline surges out of the blue without any reason whatsoever right and leaves you wondering where does that come from what happened (laughs) all the time me yes 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 completely normal we always say when our anxious mind and our stress system get sensitized they take on this aim and fire attitude Mm -hmm. forcing oh yeah that's a threat so oh let me fire a warning here it's like oh let me fire first and then decide if it's true danger or not And this is just due to sensitization. I know very unpleasant, but happens, as you can see, to so, so many people during times of of being highly sensitized. So that's number one. And number two, your last question was, how do I handle this? (laughs) No, can you answer that in the chat? How do you handle that? I love having the chat answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier. And then it helps. You don't. Yes, easy. It's a gold star. You don't. That's the disordered part of it. And so I develop panic disorder, but exactly what I eat, what you just said. Glad you said it. You're like, that's sensitization. Like a heightened state, something that randomly misfires at the wrong time is not necessarily panic disorder. It's sensitization. And so kind of like if you are watching a scary movie and you're home by yourself and you're in a dark house and it's nighttime out and the windows are open, you're sensitized. So now you are kind of overreact. You're like overreacting to every noise. (gasps) What was that? What was that? That's the sign of a sensitized state. Okay. We develop panic disorder trying to handle sensitized state. And so it's the trying to handle and then getting just dis, like discouraged that I can't handle it. It's this is this is Darren in a nutshell. This question was a great question to open up with because this is exactly what dare is for. Whether you're scared or there's anxiety for a like an obvious reason or whether I'm just scared of a sensitized state or scared of scared or whatever. It's, it's, again, trying to figure out why trying to do a bunch of things to get rid of what's there. That's usually what all of this comes down to. Yeah. And I know I repeat this on every webinar, but I think it's one of the most important things to understand and remember the question why will bring on so, so many troubles if it's left unanswered. (gasps) Why did this just happen? Oh my God, is it because I have a setback? Is it because I had too much caffeine? Is it because of my new jobs? Maybe I'm putting on too much stress? Or maybe, yeah, my nerves are so sensitized. Done. Done. 
normalization, normalization, normalization. That is so, so important because once you go down that rabbit hole of asking yourself why, 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 I promise you, your mind will come up with a thousand reasons why you're feeling like this. And 99% of them will be wrong, but they will drive you mad. Right, right. And pin your whys. If you don't spend too much time in the whys of the feeling. Why am I feeling this way? We're all very good at staring at the thing that's present. Pin your whys to your actions and behaviors. Not why am I feeling? Why am I staring at my feeling? Why am I like, why am I doing a million things? Oh, because of this feeling. I don't like this feeling. It's okay that you don't like this feeling. It's not about, I, I'll post this soon in an upcoming post. I texted it to myself just before this webinar because I saw a lot of similar questions that came up. It's not about turning something on. You can't turn something on or off, but you can tune in or tune out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So forget turn on happy or turn off derealization or like forget about manipulating all the autonomic nervous system stuff. That's what we're like trying to do, trying to turn this on and turn off, turn off my, my sensitization. You don't, but you can tune in and tune out of it based on where I hook all of my attention and my importance to all of my behaviors, all of the, all of the que continued questioning. And again, you can, you can answer your question. Also, you can answer the whys without 100% certainty. That's where so many people get stuck. I need to know for sure. It's definitely a sensitized nervous system. You also won't know for sure. So you can answer it. Like not most things don't have 100% certainty. And so I know that's people are looking for a 100% certain answer. Like you can definitively answer the question, but not with 100% certainty. I don't know if that makes, does that make sense to everybody? Absolutely, it, it makes sense. And also another question you can ask yourself, this came up in my academy call yesterday a few times. Yeah, I'm feeling better. It's it's getting good, but I still have this. Mm -hmm. I still have thoughts. Mm -hmm. I still have DP, although I'm functioning. I still notice, I still notice. So I would rather have you ask yourself or notice, not the presence of, of sensations, but rather the presence of your response. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, oh, but those thoughts are still coming up. Why don't you say, hmm, oh, interesting. I'm still afraid of these thoughts. Yeah. I oh, look at me looking at that. Yes. Right? Rather than look at this. Again, I'm mm -hmm. doing there to, if you're doing there to turn something off, which means, but I still feel, then that means you're using dare to get rid of. It's not about turning something on or off. It's learning how to, like you're tuned in and it's learning how to tune out from this thing because it's unimportant important it's uncomfortable but it's unimportant discomfort yeah and although it feels very important very very important you have to treat it as if it's not important and this is the the paradox of it and this is the hard part because we're so used to doing everything um and, and being aligned oh i'm hungry all right let's go grab a sandwich i eat the sandwich i like the sandwich now i'm satiated and i feel good everything is aligned right oh i'm tired all right, let's go to bed. Oh, that's so comfortable. Now I'm rested. I feel good. Everything is in line. And it's exactly the opposite of anxiety. Exactly mm -hmm. the opposite. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I feel anxious for no reason at all. What is going on? I don't know, but I think something's going on. No, there's nothing going on. So I'm going to allow the energy to be present while I act as if I'm calm and composed and totally okay with what's going on this is a relearning process look at it like a project every time sensation comes up panic attack comes up say to yourself oh another chance to practice another chance to relearn something another chance to help my brain distinguish between discomfort and real danger so mm -hmm. it's going to fire when i need it and not in inappropriate situations the more you can look at this i know it's, it sounds weird but look at it rationally and like a project like you are whatever teaching a new puppy that moved into your home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to not bark at the post guy look at it like this it's nothing more because it's so easy as michelle said to get tuned into i have this anxiety disorder and because it's still a panic now i have panic disorder and my parents had that too and they're on medication this is why i'm going to be stuck that's not helpful even mm -hmm. if all these things are true it's not helpful 
at all. It's just feeding into this anxiety identity that we build over time. And the more we do that, the more we paint a story that will be really hard to tell in a boring way, as Michelle mm -hmm. said. It's always going to be very dramatic, very tuned in. You must zoom out, step, tap, to take a step back and say, yeah, whatever, it is what it is, and move on. And I just want to clarify, somebody in the chat is, I think, looking for a bunch of people. So I, I don't know if you're used to maybe our group calls or Dare Academy, um, the different phases of Dare Academy. These webinars, if you see me and you see Aida, that's all you see. And then you chat along to everybody in the chats. And then these will be uploaded on YouTube and all the other podcast channels. Yeah. And I would like to pick one question from the chat. Um, Carolyn asked, is sensitization the same as vigilance? So hypervigilance is a consequence of sensitization. And think of it this way. Every state of mind comes with certain thoughts, certain feelings, and certain body, I don't know how to say this, certain way of energy levels. Let's put it this way. So mm -hmm. let's say you, you had your heart broken. What kind of thoughts will you have? positive thoughts about yourself, how wonderful you are, how you are have always done the best. No, all of your flaws will come to mind. All the ways you fucked up and why you're not enough. And how will you feel? And how will your energy levels be? How will you project into the future? It's completely different. Now, other situation, let's say you have your dream job and it's paying really well and you feel important and you feel competent and everything goes well. How does that change your perception? The way you feel, the way you move, the way you talk, the way you think. Now, when you're sensitized, what is sensitization? Think of tired but wired. I'm overly strained. Mm -hmm. I'm exhausted. I'm burned out, in quotation marks, but I can't rest. So it's basically the inability to rest, to calm down from this sympathetic high state. What do you expect your mind and body to do in such a state? Be like all happy and think positively and be calm and relaxed? No, it's going to be on fire. It's going to be hypervigilant. It's going to be sensitive to light and sound. And you're going to be more aggravated and thin skinned and all of these things that come with that certain state of mind. So again, here, try to, to manage your expectations. When I know I'm sensitized from something, I, I don't take myself too seriously. <laughs> Same PMS, guys. All I was going to say that. Struggle from PMS those days. Like, don't take yourself seriously. You know you're going to be thin skinned. You know everything is 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 going to be really feel really intense. But you also know it's just this phase and it's going to pass. And try to treat sensitization in the same way because this again it will pass. It's just the thought of oh my God, what if I stay like this forever? Yeah, it's yeah. becoming scared of sensitization. Your your body mm -hmm. goes into fight or flight mode. It's most productive use is to use that when there's present danger. Okay. It's a survival mechanism. Sometimes it just rings at the wrong time. That's kind of it. Whether mm -hmm. it's for a physiological reason, whether it's because you're having you had a virus or you um smoke pot or you like whatever. There are many things that might ring that bell at the wrong time. But a hype a heightened state comes with hypervigilance, comes with tuned in senses, right? Comes with um fast moving thoughts so you can plan for your escape. It it just kind of comes just like sad comes with like like crying and like tight chest or whatever. It's just that's how it feels that's what comes with it that's the ingredients and it's just learning what a sensitized state is and getting better at also knowing how a sensitized state comes back down which is it comes down when it sees you're safe and it sees you're safe when you go back to activities of living which is this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not fighting anything. I'm not fleeing from anything. I'm not freezing because of anything. And I'm not protecting myself from anything. When when your alarm sees, here's the whoosh for you to stop life and attend to something. It will come back down to rest and digest mode when the attending is done. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if fight or flight mode becomes the next obsession, sensitization becomes the obsession right? When the symptom becomes the obsession, that's usually the hook we get stuck in, where now anxiety is the O to the OCD-ish type cycle. And now I'm doing everything possible to get rid of this. And when it's gone, then I cease doing. 
Mm. It turns off when the doing ceases first. Mm -hmm. And you know, guys, you've been sensitized before, but you didn't fear it. But the sensitization had a context. The problem comes when you're sensitized for, for no apparent reason. This is when your brain's like, oh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Again, going back to the question, why are you feeling this way? Mm -hmm. Give it the context, a uh, true context. And that is, yeah, well, maybe I have been praying too much or maybe, oh, if I look at my life closely, I have four kids, a job, a husband who's away, two dogs and a cat. <laughs> I haven't seen my friends in months. My self-care is completely out of whack. Yeah, that's kind of sensitizing, right? Our, our life... It, is sensitizing by nature. This is why we need all the self-care stuff mm -hmm. to relax from, from our very intense life. The sensitization itself is not dangerous and it's not bad. It's uncomfortable and becomes really scary when, as Michelle just said, it becomes your obsession because you can't let go of trying to figure out why you're feeling mm -hmm. like this. Right. I'm sure Sometimes, like you might feel sad out of the blue again we develop these disordered relationships with that too because oh, i'm sad i suddenly just got sad or i just got like the bottom dropped out of me and i feel this like void of everything everything kind of flushed out of me and then we tr label that too oh god why why do i feel this again i don't know maybe i'm hungry maybe it's my blood sugar maybe it's whatever maybe i'm tired maybe it's maybe maybe there might be a reason for all those things. Like I was saying there, there, like there could be a why, right. But desperately needing to know why becomes the next O of the OCD two. Uh, does that make sense? And so it's, I'm just sad out of the blue right now. And how do I treat the fact that I'm sad? If you treat that as dangerous or a threat or a sign of something terrible to come of course here comes anxiety to whoosh you and clearly show you sad and magnify sad or magnify dizzy or magnify tired whatever it is right i shouldn't be so tired i slept well i took all my vitamins i eat well but i'm still so tired that's when like the sensation becomes the obsession and now i'm mm -hmm. desperately trying to get rid of tired yeah, and, and just to clear clear up what I said, so it's not about trying to find a why for your sensitization, right. but sometimes you know we get so zoomed into I feel like this, I feel like this, we completely forget like how what's what's going on in the rest of our lives, and sometimes it makes sense to say, mm -hmm. yeah, hold on a minute, like oh. I've been not looking after myself for a while. And that sometimes just helps you to ease into, oh, okay, I see, fine. Don't need to worry about this. It will calm down. But if you take a look and you can find something, it's probably just sensitization out of the blue. You will never know. It's not important. Let it go. Uh, here's Which one other thing. To oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just, a bit, before I forget, you once mentioned a really nice analogy with the spider. Can you remember that? Going back to the question that was asked. Oh, you said a spider was on your arm? The vigilance, you know, so you're completely calm and then you notice a spider in your hand and what happens then for the next three hours? Right. Every hair, every little dust that falls on you, you're like a spider, there's a spider, right? And you're, you're more aware and tuned in, right? Hyper vigilant, looking for the spider, right? Especially if you see the spider and then the spider is gone and you don't know where it went, right? Every little tickle in your arm, you're going to start feeling itchy. That's... That's not the sign of a disorder. That's the sign of human beings and just how our bodies work. Yeah. And, you know, that's such a beautiful, beautiful analogy because transfer that to anxiety. There is no spider that you can see. So the spider becomes the heart palpitation or the rate of breathing or how many times I blinked or the, the presence of an intrusive thought. So you're not constantly, what was that intrusive thought? How fast did it come? From which direction? Did it change the theme? Did it come fast or slow? Did it feel mm -hmm. like an impulse? Or was it an image? It's the same thing what Michelle just described. It's just not the spider. Right? So next time you notice you're doing that, tell yourself, oh, I'm looking for a spider. Right? And yep. then yep. go. And it's Mad Libs. Do you have Mad Libs in Germany? What is that? Ah, oh, I talked about this on my academy call yesterday, and it turns out it's not all around the world. I don't know if it's just the, a U.S. thing. Does anybody in the chat outside of the United States have Mad Libs? It's like a like a little book that you. It's like a game kind of thing you play to learn nouns and adjectives and verbs. And what you do is like I'll have to bring one on one of the calls. Um, 
you have like a, a list of paper, you put, put in a noun, put in an adjective, put in a word, and you just make a bunch, you put in a bunch of funny words. Oh, look, I see everybody's talking about Mad Libs. And then you, without reading the story that's attached, then you plug the words into the story. And it makes this very funny nonsense type story, especially when like you put like kind of inappropriate words in there, whatever we, we like, it's fun to do that. Um, so I was saying a, a lot of this follows a certain template where it becomes a game of Mad Libs where you just, you can fill in the blank, but the base words are the same. Like I'm struggling with, this was my post yesterday. I'm struggling with blank replace here anxiety 99% of this call replace it with sad replace it with dizzy replace it with um I don't know dpdr replace it with heart palpitations it's the struggle not what's in the blank you can always fill in the blank with something else the blank just becomes the next obsession okay mm -hmm. so we can do a whole webinar on dizzy but the webinar would have nothing to do with dizzy. It would still be about how I treat dizzy. And then I can do the same exact webinar, but just dub in like as I'm talking, go. And then you accept that allow derealization. And, and when you feel derealization, you're going to like not fight derealization, dizzy, tired, hungry, nauseous, whatever it is. We're just hooking our fight to different things. So anxiety in itself comes with a slew of symptoms, right? Heightened state. Like you guys, everybody knows, right? Energy level. DPDR is a symptom of anxiety, but then DPDR can then become the next obsession that we then latch into a symptom and the symptom becomes our next identified danger, yeah, and after that, comes uh, totally. And sorry to interrupt, Michelle. And next comes existential anxiety. Yep, right? yep. This is so, it's not beautiful. It's not nice, but it makes so much sense. But we talked about, and you mentioned before, um, smoking pot. Can't count how many clients I had the past two years. I know, I know. first attack or first flare-up of DPDR mm -hmm. um, after or during smoking pot. So it usually starts with, I have a panic attack. I feel out of control and I know I'm stoned. I can't help myself. That's mm -hmm. horrible. It's a horrible state to be in. And this is why the anxiety or the panic is so, so high because you know you are not fully in control. It seems like you're not fully in control. So panic attack. And because it's so intense, triggers DPDR. And then with DPDR, think about what I said earlier, different states of mind that come with a set of thoughts and feelings and energy levels. Now, when you're... When you feel like, oh, I, I feel so disconnected and everything feels unreal, what kind of thoughts will you have? Yep. Probably something like, yeah, and well, what if it's not real? What if you have been dreaming all this time? Oh, dreaming. Well, why do we dream? What happens in our dream? Who even oh, am I that I can feel this feeling? What changed? Something switched in my brain or I'm still high 19 months later. That's some <laughs> high grade marijuana you bought if you're still high 19 months later. But that's how it feels because again, fear, if you have a pa panic attack, adrenaline is a memory sealer. Okay. Mm -hmm. It kind of takes a screenshot of what's ever happening. Again, super useful for danger so that you can remember that exact danger scenario. So should the danger scenario again come up, you're already getting pre-whooshed. You're whooshed and ready to fight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you are high and you have a panic attack, screenshot, click, click. Although I always press the wrong buttons at soccer and then I call emergency services. So sorry for it. all of that. But so it screenshots the situation. And so now feeling disconnected gets pinned up to the radar, even though you're not high anymore, but now it becomes right pinned to the radar. And so now not only do we find this also happens, not just moving on to existential anxiety, which always, if somebody will call me, you'll see me nodding my head off. And they're like, this is common. This is, is this because this is a sign of a major? I'm like, no, because this happens all the fucking time. It's just not talked to. It's such a common thing of, of course you're going to start questioning is this even real because I still feel unreal and now I'm not high anymore so the next like, kind of like logical human assumption would be well that must have messed up my brain somehow and now either like what comes to the existential world or now I'm about to go crazy 
because mm-hmm. this is my biased view of what crazy looks like. This is me feeling disconnected. And I looking at disconnected. Who's gone down this on the chat? This is such a common. Now I'm disconnected. I am uh, attaching the definition of disconnected means about to go crazy. And so now we take disconnected, pin it to here. And now as long as I don't feel disconnected, I will not go crazy. But if I still feel disconnected, this is me on my way to crazy. Okay. The other thing anxiety will do in this heightened state is so now it's not just DPDR. Okay. It also will find all of his cousins, first cousins, Mm -hmm. the second cousins. It's not just am I real? Are you real? What the hell's going on? It's something like that. Like now you're probably tuned into brain fog or forgetfulness or um, tired or lightheaded because lightheaded it's kind of like high, right? But what about lightheaded? So now you're getting wished for all of the cousins of that. So does this make sense to everybody? And it doesn't necessarily have to be this DPR story we're talking about here. It could be anything else. It could be um, if it was nausea, then it's stomach pain, then it's swallowing, then it's it's usually all kind of keeps similar themes, but it's the main theme and then the themes cousins. Yeah. Oh, we call this generalization. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if you experience this, oh, you were fine driving in your car or as a passenger, it doesn't matter, everything was perfect. Then you had this one panic attack and then, oh, I can't drive anymore. And then I can't sit on the passenger seat. And now all of a sudden I can't step into an airplane and I can't step into an elevator. And I actually, I can't do an MRI scan and I can't go to the theater. So it expands more and more, it generalizes. But the good news is it goes the other way around too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you can feel safe in a theater or work through panic in a theater, you can all of a sudden one day just drive and it's going to be okay. So that's the good news there. Right. And remember, it generalizes because this guy who's holding up my phone, this guy is is like, well, let's just err on the side of caution. Oh, she fought the bear. Okay. Well, let's, here's a little brown furry thing. Also, this is a bunny. Let's just alert her to brown furry things. And if, and then who waits and looks to see what you do. And if you now avoid brown furry things, it's like, Okay, well, what about just like the woods in general? And then you get a a whoosh going into the woods. And he's like, all right, write that down. I guess woods. All right, what about just like leaving your house? Obviously, going into the what about leaving your house? And you leave your house. You're like, well, what about just... And so that's how it's it's alerting you to possible. And so it will take you the specific thing and then start alerting you to the non-specific things. I is very good at using real words. I just sound like I'm five years old. Generalization is the real term for it, where instead of just bears, it's, it's Everything's animals in nature or being by myself or pick something else that was in the screenshot, which is like a cloudy day. I felt dizzy on a cloudy day. And every time there's a cloudy day, it's like I go find dizzy. Hmm body and brains is weird shit like that is it, we make like these associations that happen and they get stuck and you're like oh my gosh so now it must be the clouds it must be my eyes i better get my eyes checked and then you keep getting these clean bills of health continuing to look for what's wrong with me which is usually the underlining foundation that keeps us all together yes and associations important keyword and, you know, we bring from time to time, we bring out personal experiences from, from our lives, just to, just so you can guys can relate and know that we can relate to, to you and that what you're experiencing is so normal. The other day I was um, putting clothes out of my washing machine and I have two cats. So Jamie stepped into the, the empty washing machine and I was like, hmm, my brain was like, oh, like that would be a horrible idea. If the if average <laughs> turn it would be horrible. I had the same thing with Jamie with the dishwasher. <laughs> it just Jamie. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> Jamie? So do I have anxiety because I had this in- intrusive thought? No, it was an association. Right? It mm-hmm. happens automatically. There's nothing wrong with it. And did it feel good? Like, no. I was like, mm. I cringed at the thought of like, Jamie, get out there. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Not because I was afraid I'm going to turn on the washing machine. I just didn't like the visual of it. <laughs> right? Completely normal. But it's again, as Michelle said, fill in the blank. 
I had a thought about Jamie and the washing machine is very different from I struggle mm -hmm. because I have the thought of Jamie. Right. I'm struggling with intrusive cat washing thoughts, right? That's different. And then, then the thoughts are the identified problem. It's the struggle that's the identified problem. Yes. And you know, sometimes you guys um, write in the chat if you've experienced this. And Michelle, I'm sure you've gotten this many, many times. Clients will come and say, you know, I, I, had, I had anxiety before. It was all about physical sensations. And I worked through that. But if, now it's thoughts. And, and then, oh, I'm good with the thoughts. But oof, all of a sudden, I, I have a problem with feeling traps. It's like anxiety always finds something else to scare me with. Mm -hmm. Is that true mm -hmm. or false? You guys, what do you think? Yes, mm -hmm. true, true. Mm -hmm. Who thinks it's not true? Anybody who thinks <laughs> not true? <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you guys. <laughs> it's kind of not true. <laughs> it's kind of not true. This is how, how it feels to you. But the problem is because you keep the struggle going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what changed was the, the, the thing that you filled in the blank with. That yeah. changed. And this is why it feels to you. But there you go. Olivier, 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 gold star, gold star for gold you. Star. But, and notice Aida's words too, because this is so as if anxiety is the guy who's trying to get you. I'm going to yeah. get you. I'm going to scare her this time. I'm going to show her this and I'm really get her, right? That's not its job. And if you're still viewing it as the bad guy, it's still a relationship disorder. He's going to show you whatever he thinks is potential danger. He just happens to think this a physical sensation is potential danger. And based on how you treat it will be whether he continues to show it to you or not. And then a thought will pop up. Then a thought will pop up and he'll go, oh my God, what about this? And based, you see, like we don't mind when he shows you the tree about to fall on our car or when he shows you the baseball about to fall on our head. That's not whack-a-mole. That's just him showing you something else that could be danger. I know it feels that way and it does tend to like bounce around. So I, I, I understand that that's why she asked that question. It was almost like a trick question because you know, everybody's going to say yes. Yes. It can go from this to this, to this. Um, oh, you just went to get a guy. <laughs> I went to get a guy. Okay. Silly analogy, but so important. I love what you just said, Michelle. It's such an important point. Looking or viewing our anxiety as a thing that wants to harm us and is out to get us. So not true. One of my favorite analogies is looking at your anxious mind like, like your employee. Okay. You're the boss. Mm -hmm. You are the boss and you have an employee that is your anxious mind and you assigned him the job to warn you of things. So one day he got all sensitized and came to you and said, hey, what if this is dangerous? What if you're going crazy? So it's, those are all questions. And you like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. I'm going crazy. So let me go and, and try to prevent that or get, get to my, myself to help. And then this guy's like, ah, oh, you see, I kept you alive. Mm -hmm. I confirmed my suspicion with your behavior. And then it's like, okay, let me move out of my boss chair because I'm right, no boss. Right, right, right. And we give himself a raise, which he was never meant to have. He was never meant to have the decision-making position. And this guy goes all crazy, like, oh, my God, what do I need to do? What do I need to watch out for? <laughs> help, help, help. So he's, he takes on this aim and fire mentality because he is not competent enough to lead your life, okay? Only you can do that. This guy's actually super happy the moment you say, you know what, enough of this, okay? Go back at your post, <laughs> go back to warning, I will take over the show. And this guy's like, oh, thank God he's giving me or she's giving me a rest and I can just do my job. Right. Okay. Clear, defined roles. You work together to stay alive. <laughs> hey, guy, right? You work together. His job his job description is to alert you and show you, period. Alert you, show you, Aida, look. And then he looks at you to see what you do. He alerts you and shows you, and then you look and decide. 
look to see. Oh, thanks for the preemptive energy. Should I need to use it for? Oh, what the hell did you show me? Oh, a thought about putting a cat in the washing machine. Oh, thanks for the whoosh for that thought. But I don't need to use my super like precious resource of energy to do anything about thoughts. Just because you sent me a whoosh doesn't mean I need to use a whoosh to attend to that. Thank you for showing me that thought, but I can think about whatever I want about this cat. I can think about wonderful things. I can think about even more terrible things. Okay. Not replacing positive thoughts with negative thoughts. It's all thoughts are safe. And so Mm -hmm. my continued involvement and action and energy that I'm spending towards this. And this is where it's hard because now you're stuck. You're now you're left not doing anything, but with a lot of doing energy. Mm -hmm. Now you have lots of energy pumping through your body. And this is where the training comes in of like, no, no, I will carry on with whatever I would have been doing if you didn't alert me to that thought. I can continue to prep my dinner while I'm still in a heightened state, right? Just like while after you watch the movie, you're still in a heightened state, but you don't pull up your chair and stare out the window just because you're scared. You know, you're scared because of the movie and you just carry on scared and then scared kind of leaves by itself. Yes. And be bossy. Don't forget to be bossy. This is about education. You are educating this guy. Right? And it's kind of our responsibility when we leave our boss chair to our anxious mind and it goes completely nuts because it just can't do the job. Everybody who has a company, everybody who's in a leader position, just think about that. If you would give your responsibility to somebody who doesn't have the knowledge, doesn't have the education, how would that person feel? (laughs) And then they try their very best to keep things going, but but they just can't. So be assertive and um, be confident that you can do this, you can lead your life as you have done until you gave your power over to this guy. Mm -hmm. Look at it as education. Oh, there you go. There was a thought. There was an alert. No, thanks. That's fine. No, thanks. You don't need to go into the depth of why it's fine and how you're safe and, and all of these explanations. Thanks. Not today. Done. And if you guys uh, asked on the chat where they can get our furry friends here, uh, that's our trusty Amazon. Yep. I got so, mine from Amazon too. Yes. Yeah, so I have a couple of We should of make them. a dare one. We should make one and just okay. put dare on it or something. And uh, yeah, but, I mean, be. really, just get anything. Get a little keychain. I've got a little cute little monster keychains here because these are kind of hard to tote around. But, um, you know. <laughs> like you can get a small one that you can take around with you just as like a reminder he they'll always come with you so you see how this guy so he's always here but he's not always yelling he's always present but sometimes he's just quiet and looking and then he like mine actually squeaks right like he's like i gotta look so just know he's always coming not oh good he's not here no he's here because he's going to alert you when the car is about to hit you when you're about to miss the last step He's just, he'll, he's saving his wishes for when he thinks you might need them. Again, sometimes we're tired or he's overworked or there's been danger. And he's a little like, oh, and he flips the, the whoosh switch. He hits the adrenaline release valve and he's whoosh, whooshing you at the wrong time. Oh, still, thanks for the whoosh, but oh, it's an unnecessary whoosh. It was a misfire. And now I'm whooshed for danger, but I pin in my actions and behaviors to danger, never to fear. I yes. may have fear and it may be useful to fight danger, but I never need to fight fear. I actually don't need to do really anything about it other than feel the feeling that my body just created. And I just quickly would like to respond to a message here on the chat. Um, just making clear that people are not doing DARE, but what they're actually doing is CPT third wave method- methodology. Uh, da, da, da. Yes, you're absolutely right. So when we say do DARE, we don't mean that DARE is this special thing that we invented, right? As the book states and the in the page Science of DARE states. So it's based on acceptance and commitment therapy, ERP, and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy. But DARE is the acronym we use for utilizing the most effective techniques from these therapeutic forms. 
And because it's really hard when a panic attack comes up to remember how do I look at this thought? How could I replace it with something? Da, 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 da. What's my we- cognitive distortion? What's the, what's the, like, yeah, yeah. DARE is basically, we, we made all this shit up. We did. DARE is an acronym. We made up the acronym, right? It was, it's just, there's nothing, there's no special. This is not like, oh, we made the new tool on the, yeah. like the, the, the infomercial and buy this now. And it's not a weapon to get rid of. And which is also why people do CBT and act in ERP with the wrong intention to get rid of. Let's try act. Did it work? Let's try act. Act literally means leave all the shit alone. Leave yep. it, accept it, let it make your decisions based on your values. And so what we do, what we do in dare is to simplify CBT. I'm trained in CBT. I'm trained. We're all trained in all these different areas, but us therapists have overcomplicated the shit out of all mm-hmm. of this. And, and make people reliant, made people mm-hmm. reliant on the work with us and our, our, Biggest goal at DEAR is that you can learn to use this yourself, not be dependent on a therapist. Obviously, everybody needs help from time to time or some guidance and you have book a few calls or whatever you need for how long you need. But the goal of DEAR is that you can use this on your own and not just for anxiety, but for Mm -hmm. all Mm -hmm. other areas of your life too. So it's really something that encourages you to tap into your own resilience and strength and this is why we love it so much because it's easy. It's easy. If and I have attitude, this, don't get lost in those letters. It's more yes. of like force, not really steps. It's like, how would you describe leaving something be? How would you describe like this is more of an attitude? And so a lot of people are doing all the ERP, love it, right? CBT, love it. Every picture like you're an artist. Like you should have multiple brushes for multiple things. Some people really struggle with their thoughts and, and thinking and the way they treat thoughts. CBT is super useful for that with the intention of getting better at how you treat and use your thoughts in a useful and productive way, not to stop having thoughts I don't like. So often the tools are useful and helpful, but the intention is where we go wrong on both sides, on the client sides, and honestly, on the therapist sides as well. 100%. 100% totally agree with everything that, that you said. Right, and I could fill a whole webinar just talking about the diffusion step from acceptance and commitment therapy. We mm-hmm. could spend 20 more webinars <laughs> going into all the cognitive distortions mm-hmm. and we could go mm-hmm. webinar after webinar on exposure. Right? Would that serve you though? Because you can read that on the internet, you can buy the books, you can book your therapist and they will explain all the theory to you in many, many expensive hours. But is that what you need? And we are a big fan of giving you the information that you need so you can take back control in your life and apply this. Just to clear it out in case somebody was wondering if we made something up or if we're trying to sell something that is not science-based, which is absolutely not true. So do all those things, but remember the golden question, what am I doing and why am I doing it? I'm identifying my cognitive distortions and filling out the worksheet so I can replace my negative thoughts with positive thoughts. And I do it enough times, I'll eliminate all the negative thoughts and I won't have an anxiety disorder. And then I can go on the train and then I can finally get back to work. And then I can't, nope, Mm. love it, love CBT, but using CBT with that intention and that attitude with that expectation, what dare is to teach you how to like here, this is what I did on the, on the group call yesterday. Here's the thought, right? Here's how I feel. Here's how I treat how I feel. Right. And like, we need to kind of get out of the way here. So kind of taking a step back and going, Oh yeah, there I go thinking like, there I go looking at everything in black and white again. Oh yeah, there I am cognitive distorting again, rather than desperately changing all we again, because we get a lot of doers that come here and try and do themselves out of this and use all these great approaches for more doing for continued doing ERP is basically dare in a nutshell. Here's the thing I don't like and how to just not like it. Yep. And leave it be like, kind of, that's it. That's kind of what act is too. that. That's it. Simple. We're just here to simplify all those things. Yes. And I think a great, just, just one last example I want, I want, want to bring is with 
let's say CBT and, and ACT and, and DARE. So let's say a person fears that if they step into the train, they will have a panic attack, go crazy and start screaming at all the people in the train. So CBT would, among other things, ask, well, is there proof for that? So try to find the proof that or, or how likely that is that this will happen and how many things um, can you bring up that will make it very unlikely to happen. So now you think, you analyze, and you come to the conclusion that it's very, very, very unlikely. And I don't have one single proof that this might happen, right? But, but there is this 1%. One percent, this one percent that says, yeah, but what if you do? And the problem is that this is so highly emotional that one percent of your emotional brain will override 99 percent of logic. Guys, can you relate to that? I, oh, my anxious mind always tells me I am going to faint on a ski lift. How likely is that? Zero. I still fear. And every time I see a skill, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to faint. I'm going to faint. Or I am the only person out of 10,000 people where something's going to break and I'm going to fall down. Yep. Or I'm going to throw up in the middle seat just because I'm in the middle seat and now I'm just going to barf. Not be, no, the aisle seat. Okay, I'm totally fine. Probably not going to throw up. That's not how throw up works. That's how my brain thinks throw up works. Yeah. And this is where, where CBT becomes challenging. CBT is fantastic for, for a lot, a lot of things, but this is where it becomes a little bit challenging. And this is where ACT does a beautiful job and says, hmm, you know, you can have that thought and still step on the scale he lift and mm -hmm. still step on the thing. You can, you can fear that you're going to go crazy. You can do both things. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you can diffuse from that. So it's like, there's this guy screaming at me, oh, you're going to die. You're going to die. And I'm like, Okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. to, so I'm not fighting this. I'm not waiting for this guy to go away so I can, oh, okay, now finally I can step into the train. I'm like, oh, all right, I see. This is my anxious mind telling me that. Okay, I can have that thought. Thoughts are safe and I can still go. Right? This I is, at, and so there is kind of like both things together merged in a simpler way to use on your own. Yeah. I hope that you know, like back in the day, like when I went to school, it was different when we went, when we had training and if, I, if there's any therapists on here that want to chime in, um, or even if you hear this afterwards, pop a comment on like the, wherever you can comment the YouTube channel, I guess, um, you did training because it was great to be trained in all different things. Oh, this, oh, that's interesting. Let's add something else that might be useful to my clients. And it's become kind of so polarized now where it's like, Oh, you're trained in this and this is what I do and everybody else is wrong and I'm right. Oh, you're trained on that. Well, that's wrong. Well, this is right. And now we have this, well, did you do somatic therapy? It's only somatic, somatic therapy. But if you don't change your thoughts, you should, and, and on the, I can only imagine what it's like to be on the other end of being the consumer of all of this information of hearing like very, um, people that are very good at telling you why this is the most important. And again, picture it like, multiple paintbrushes we were like we always look forward to getting trained in all different things because there's not there's not one dare is trying to encompass all of those things like picture cbt from like the neck up oh my thinking oh i kind of get stuck in all these like little thought patterns and all of this and picture like somatic type work from the neck down how my relationship with my body, my relationship my with my feelings. And CBT is more like my relationship with my thoughts. But I where I see it, people kind of doing it wrong was people are using CBT to change their relationships with their feelings and their body rather Thank than you, their Rachel. relationship with their thoughts. Does that make sense? And logic away when you're really like learning how to just feel feelings and they come together, top down or bottom up should still come to the middle. Yes, and just, just important to point out, so... CBT is great and exposure-based CBT is fantastic. We're just talking about this one part of CBT that a lot of therapists use and a lot of our clients try to, um, to implement when facing anxiety. And that is replacing anxious thoughts with positive thoughts or trying to reason and use logic. 99% mm -hmm. of the cases just it shoots back, it goes south, right? 
So just don't think that we're against CBT. Absolutely not. Exposure is a big part of, of uh, CBT. So just to, to, to close this up, DARE is based on mostly ACT, mindfulness-based cognitive therapy with elements of CBT and ERP. It's science-based. If you're interested in the science of it, flip to the end of the book. We have a whole chapter on the science behind DARE, uh, written by a psychologist who goes into, into great detail about this. So if you're interested, go check that out. Michelle, shall we? Try to answer another question. I think we've answered a lot. We answered. I'm looking through to see if I can grab something different. Honestly, even though these questions are specific, I mean, the very next question is how can I, now let's have the chat answer this. How can I turn off or turn down the overall negative thoughts that lead me into a panic? Did you guys? Okay, Repeat that one more time. How Michelle? can I turn off? or turn down the overall negative thoughts that lead me into a panic? Like who on the chat believes, even though we didn't say this question specifically, do you feel that that question has been addressed on this webinar? Yeah, you don't, you tune out. Yes, 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 okay, address. I'm gonna give you the answer visually, okay? So, here you go, those are the thoughts. <laughs> and you are trying to <laughs> get out of my face. Oh, how can I make you go away? Right? How is that working out? Mm -hmm. right? I control agenda. I am fighting this and that. How do I do this? Oh, by, by trying to um, be keeping anxiously busy all the time, by drinking, by going out, by avoiding this or that, controlling this or that. So there you have your control agenda. Great. Last question, how does it work? What's the outcome? Right? If this hasn't helped at all, try this. Okay, keep it close to you. So, yep, you can be here. I know you're just my anxious mind. Yes, you come with a whole set of very unpleasant bodily sensations and mental sensations for that matter. I like to look at thoughts as just another sensation too. It makes it really yep. brain sensation. Your heart <laughs> makes beats. Your brain <laughs> makes thoughts. Everything <laughs> after that is where we <laughs> kind of get screwed up. Your brain just creates thoughts. Your heart makes beats, right? And so what about the thoughts? Here's the thought. Like, so you might have a thought and then you have an opinion about that thought. Oh, there's a thought. I'm aware of this particular thought. I'm aware of putting my kitten in the washing machine. Oh, my opinion about that thought is I don't like that one. Oh, that one came paired with the feeling of disgust. Here is how the feelings work in with thoughts. You don't pick one and not the other. You don't work on this without working. Like they're all, it's all the same thing, body, mind connection. So I had a thought about washing the cat in the washing machine. Oh, I don't like that thought. And I don't like that feeling that comes paired with that thought. And now what? Nothing. Period. All the periods. There's nothing left to do. How, any any question that comes after, how do I handle that? What do I do? How do I make myself not panic about the thought? That's the continued involvement. And all, all of those things are normal human nature. So you can't decide to not do that. Just like you can't decide to not blink anymore just because you don't huh. like it. Right? Your brain's going to make plenty of thoughts. It's latching into them, involving in them, fighting them, treating them as if they're a prediction of the future or a danger, or it's using them to make decisions about all the other things for your life. That's the stuck spot. Yes. And maybe in closing, we can summarize a few questions from um, the submitted ones and on the chat. How do I let go of? How do I control? How do I minimize checking in? How do I handle how do I dare through? Right? What to do about? How to tackle? Right? All the same question, really. You're placing your focus on the struggle, right? Uh, not placing, sorry, the focus on the struggle, but on the blank. I'm so just going to pull up that picture from my post so people could see. Yeah. So if you see this again on a playback on YouTube, um, this is the, this is the, um, can you guys see that in the chat? I don't know if you can see the words on the bottom. It's not as no, we, we can't, can't read the words. We can just see the, the two uh, sticky figures. 
Okay. Identify the problem. I'm struggling with anxiety. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can, now can I you see it? I can't tell if it's uh, blurry or not. Yeah. And so it's most people are like, but look, Michelle, look at my DPDR. Look at my dizzy. Look at my thoughts. How do, what do I do? How do I handle it? All the things Aida was saying. And we're like, nope, nope. It's the struggle with. Mm -hmm. This involvement, this how you're treating this. This, the way you treat this becomes, right? You're treating that as the identified problem. But actually, the problematic piece in our job here is the fight of, is the resistance towards. It's the over-involvement in whatever that particular thing is. Yes. And I would like to leave you with a question from acceptance and commitment therapy. So if you want, you can write this down. The three very simple questions. Fantastic. F ties fantastically in into what we have talked about the past 30 minutes. Question number one. What am I struggling with? Write down the sensations, memories, situations, people, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. so number one. Question number two, in what ways am I trying to control or change them? Okay, by keeping busy, by avoiding, by control, and be really specific, really, really specific what you do. And once you've written that down, question number three, and what has been the outcome so far? And when you write them down, you see in the end, hmm. I just got more and more, nothing changed. I'm more obsessed than ever. Mm -hmm. Then you can start to question your approach, not your sanity, your personality or yourself. Question mm -hmm. your approach and ask yourself if you're using a hammer when you actually need a screwdriver. That was a nice webinar. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, this will be posted on the app in a couple months. It'll be up on the um, wherever you download your podcast and on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram at The Anxiety Paradox and Aida Beko. And let's continue our chat there. Until next time. Bye, Michelle. Bye, everyone. Bye, Aida. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to the D.A.R.E. podcast. The D.A.R.E. app has over 1 million downloads and is helping people all around the world to overcome anxiety and panic attacks. You can download the app for free at DareResponse.com.